Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this press conference. Today, you will give a few opening remarks after the interview. Thank you. Thank you, Frederick. It's very good to see you, as always. Uh, perhaps we should go directly to your to your questions on, on any of the items. Yes? Francois. Hi, DG. Um, Hi. Uh, I noticed you just tweeted that you hope that your technical meeting uh, with Iran that's scheduled for later this month takes place. Um, uh, it, you, obviously, you know that um, uh, Mohammed Islami said earlier today that it's not on the agenda. So I'm just wondering, it seemed clear not so long ago that this meeting was scheduled and you had a date for it. So what is the status of it now? Has Iran told you it's off or what's happened? Well, we, we expressed this in this way for the reasons you explain, explained. There has been a public statement from, from a, an authoritative figure that is saying that uh, there is no meeting, so I don't know. I don't, we don't know if it's this meeting or another meeting. Maybe it's lost in translation or lost in, lost in tweeting, but um, we, we hope, as I said, we hope that this, this of course is a technical meeting, it's not a high level meeting, it's a meeting that was um, supposed to continue the conversations we were having, so um, yeah, there is a, a, some doubt, I hope they will clarify. Sorry, just to be clear then, so you say maybe something got lost in translation, so you haven't, they haven't told you this directly no, at all? No, 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 just, just this tweet. But it's a tweet of the president of the EOI, so I should give credit to it. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes. Yes. Um, Hello. Let me ask you, if, if these um, talks are not on the agenda, as the Iranian side are saying, um, what would be um, the meaning of that in your view? Well, it would make uh, things even worse than they already are. I mean, we are not getting any, we are not making any progress. And if a modest technical meeting cannot take place, but I, I would like to speculate because it's not clear whether this is going to happen uh, or not. But since you ask me, of course, it would be, uh, you know, more of the same, and we are not making progress. One. Um you know that there is there is this resolution um, uh, being discussed on yeah. Iran uh, right now. Um, I just wondered whether you are um, worried that this kind of resolutions, this is the, the second in, in six months, as uh, we had a statement, um, this increase uh, of pressure on Iran will make Iran to cooperate less and less and less and even sort of leave the NPT. Um, are you generally uh, worried on that front? What I want is, and we are asking, is for Iran to cooperate with us. I've said many times these things are not going to go away. Resolution or no resolution. It's their obligation to provide us with the information we, uh, we, we need. And uh, we are trying to look uh, and, and, and try to find ways and, 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 uh, and, and mechanisms. And, uh, and we have been trying to do this for many, many months uh, unsuccessfully. So whether you know, resolutions may have a, an influence of, or the, of, on this or not, um, it's not for me to say. Um, so far, we haven't been any. We haven't been very successful. We continue addressing this issue, and we address it directly with them, independently of whether. If there was no resolution, I would still be asking them, please cooperate with me. Uh, so, um, it is a speculation. What kind of uh, um, what kind of impact a resolution may have? One more. One, one more. Yes. Um, in your, sorry about this. In your last report, what we have seen of it, reports of your report, uh, there is an increase in the amount of enriched uranium yes. to 60% yes. and 20%. How worried are you that this is getting sort of out of control in a way? Well, uh, I wouldn't say it's out of control, but what I would say is that the program continues to show a degree of, uh, I would say, um, uh, uh, advancement, which is, of course, uh, uh, 
something that uh, people are noticing, and uh, um, this makes it even more, more important and relevant that I Iran cooperates. Um, these are very high levels of uh, enrichment. I have said it many times. Um, so, uh, of course, this is an activity that can take place, but when you do it, you have to do it in full cooperation with the IAEA, not uh, with a reluctancy or reluctance or, or limiting access or, or, you know, with the things that we have been, we have been seeing. So it's part of a general pattern, I would say, that has continued for, for, for a long time now. So we hope that we can finally sit down with them, that we can reconstruct um, a dialogue with, with Iran as soon as possible. Hello, DG. Hello. Uh, uh, Seth Korinaki, Nippon Television Network. Um, I have Two questions, yes, too. Please. So let me start with the first one yes. on Iran. Yes. Um, as since the uh, camera data uh, on the uh, manufacturing uh, factory is yeah. uh, not given, yes. and then there was a discussion of the loss of the data and yeah. the difficulty yes. of reconstructing. Yes. Now, it's been quite a while, and uh, how sure would What's the certainty of IAEA at this point, or maybe by the end of this year, to be able to really say that, yes, we can reconstruct what had happened? Well, That's it, number it, question it, one. Yeah. It would be very difficult, not impossible, but very difficult. You remember that last summer, when this happened, I said, this is going to be very serious. And I'm, I'm sorry to say we were right, because... We, uh, we were hoping that the, the, the measure or the um, disconnection of the cameras would be temporary, that we would be able to have them again. This didn't happen. There doesn't seem to be a uh, prospect of that uh, again. So what, as, as, as you're rightly saying, what that uh, prevents us is from having a view of things that have been ongoing for a very long time, for a very long time. Since February 2021, with data being registered uh, and the cameras functioning, and from this summer, even without the cameras. So there's a mass of activity about which we don't know anything. So uh, assuming, being optimistic, and assuming that there is some, um, uh, there is a return to the JCPOA, and we have to uh, provide the assurances about the baselines, we would have to have an ad hoc arrangement with Iran. It wouldn't be possible on the basis of uh, the information we, we had. First of all, we had to check whether the old information, the information that was still being collected by our systems is still around. And uh, if it, that was the case, well, we should have to sit down and see what do we do about the gap that we've had for the past uh, six months or so. So this, uh, as we have said, would be technically uh, very difficult, um, would require a number of uh, partial and mitigation sort of measures, uh, which would require us to sit down with them, to look into records, to, to talk to a lot of people, and try to reconstruct the, 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 the jigsaw puzzle uh, in between. If it was impossible, we would have said it. It is very difficult. Okay, the, sec yeah, the second question, actually, uh, the second question is on the Ukraine. Uh, you have been uh, diligently working on this uh, agreement of yeah. the protection zone. Can you give us more, uh, a bit more uh, updates on what's happening now and yes. what's hindering you? Uh, well, not you, but what's hindering the... Well, uh, you know, it, it's a bit uh, difficult, and I, uh, I would ask you to, to bear with me on this, because it's an ongoing negotiation that involves uh, military aspects as well, as you can imagine. But um, what, I, what I can say is that uh, I, I have kept my, my, dial, my channels of dialogue open, of course, with, with Ukraine, uh, and naturally I have to talk to Russia as well, and I have been doing this. What I would say is that the main issues that are being discussed are, are those related to the military equipment and some, some uh, related also to the radius 
of the, um, uh, of the zone. So you can imagine that for two countries at war, they have different um, uh, objectives. And uh, I, I guess they don't want to see these military objectives being affected. My message has been very clear uh, in the sense that uh, whatever uh, military um, goals um, are on the table, they should not include shelling of a nuclear power plant. And on this, I'm very clear with both. Thank you very much. Uh, Bethany Bell, BBC, a, a follow-up question to that, if I yes. may. Um, do you, is there a kind of timeline that you think might be possible in terms of establishing this protection zone around Zaporizhia? And, and what are the biggest challenges that you see right now to that? Well, in terms of a timeline, I, I wouldn't say so, uh, but I would say that time affects the, the whole situation there uh, because we are there. What, what you see, uh, you cannot measure exactly the degree of danger because any day you can have uh, you can have a shelling, you can have a bomb being dropped or, or the interruption of an external power source which cannot be repaired um, uh, fast enough. So uh, my, my impression is that uh, it should happen as soon as possible. Um, the way, of course, we are, we are looking into the, this is not happening against you know, a peaceful background. There is an ongoing battle, um, and, and of course we, we are looking at that, and what we see in general terms, without getting into an area which is not my area of specialty, um, which is not getting any easier, or any, you know, more, more relaxed, or, or, or with a less intensity in terms of uh, the conflict. So I am extremely worried uh, about it, and I'm trying to uh, get it as soon as, as soon as I can, as soon as I can, really. Just, and again, um, how realistic is it, though, still? I mean, is this something that you have hopes for very soon, or is it something that is... I think it's, it's completely realistic. We, we have proposed something which is very feasible. We, you may remember that there were debates about whether this would be a fully demilitarized zone or whether we could involve other agencies or the UN uh, blue helmets or things like that. Since we knew that all of these alternatives were, w would make it politically very, very difficult, we um, adjusted it, narrowed it down to uh, purely uh, nuclear safety security based considerations uh, with the IAEA as the interlocutor. That was, I believe, a reasonable way forward since Ukraine and also the Russian Federation said that they were prepared to work on the basis of this. They were not saying this, forget about this, this is something that we cannot even contemplate. No one has said that, which, is, which gives me hope gives me the impression that we, we have material to work on to get to, to, get to this. Hi, Rahida Bahnam from Al Arabiya. Uh, I have a more general question. Uh, the relation between the IAEA and Iran has been steadily going backward over the last year at least. Uh, now we know, I know you're not a politician, you've, you've said this several times, but I know also that you need the support of politicians in order to be able to fulfill your job. Of course. Uh, yesterday you were in Germany, we were not allowed to ask questions, so maybe now you could talk a little bit about how much political support you actually have. What did you hear yesterday from the Germans? Do you feel that there are some countries that are a bit more reluctant into giving you the full support you need in order to be able to um, are you, excuse me if I ask you something, are you referring to Iran or Ukraine? Uh, Iran, sorry, on Iran. Iran. Yeah. yeah, well, very good. Uh, when it comes to Iran, I believe that the support the IEA has is uh, uh, really overwhelming. I cannot see anybody questioning what we are doing. On the contrary, I think that um, irrespective of the 
debates that may, may, may be taking place, even among the, the hitherto united front of the JCPOA, which has now some fractures. Um, everybody says, everybody recognizes that the work with the IAEA is indispensable. There, will, there, will, there wouldn't be a, a JCPOA without the IEA. Who would verify? Who would guarantee? Uh, and the um, still unclarified issues that on which I have been pushing um, uh, would still require uh, the agency. So uh, if there is an area where everybody agrees that um, there must be cooperation is with the, uh, on on the work with the with the IAEA. So I, I feel very supported and, and understood when it comes to uh, my work uh, with Iran. Of course, uh, we are not uh, we haven't reached a point where we see eye to eye with Iran still on these issues. I, I keep trying, and I will still keep trying. You know, uh, I, I only believe in a diplomatic solution to this based on the technical work of the IAEA. This is what we need to achieve, really. Hi, DG. <coughs> Tukshniv Agency. Sorry? Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Tukshniv, Tukshniv Agency. Honorable. Yes. Uh, I have two questions about the uh, Zaporizhia. Yes. Uh, as you know, the high level employer or worker uh, from this NPB was detained by the Russian forces. Yes. Do you have any information that you share with us? Yeah. First question. Uh -huh. Second question is about the safe zone, the nuclear safe zone. Yes. Uh, I guess you meet uh, some different countries or some uh, different politician leaders. Would you like to speak this topic with Turkey? You know, the Turkey play a different role. Uh, would you like to speak this topic with Turkey that can maybe help? I don't know. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you very much for the suggestion. Uh, on the um, uh, uh, the first was was on 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 the prisoners. Yeah. Yeah, well, as you know, uh, the issue of the staff is one of the most important ones for, for me. It is the protection of the staff, the ability of the staff to work in normal conditions, which, of course, um, uh, in, in the case of a war li like this has gone through the window, um, uh, must be, in a way, in, in addressed. Uh, for example, my permanent mission in uh, Zaporizhia is, is one of the ways to do that. They are listening to the staff, they, they, they give advice, etc. And we are doing the same uh, here. What you uh, refer to is, is a more delicate issue on which, as you know, the agency, when it could, played a role. Um, there were cases of some uh, experts or members of the staff of the plant which were detained um, and uh, we were able to um, in a certain sense, cooperate to assure their release. This happened over the past few months. Uh, there are still a couple of cases uh, on which we are consulting, uh, and the situation is not entirely clear uh, yet uh, on, on that. As you know, when it comes to these issues, there are many factors involved uh, that have to do with prisoners and the exchange of them. But when we can, when we can, all, we always um, try to play a constructive uh, role, and I have been trying to do uh, to, to do that. In terms of, uh, of course, we value very much uh, Turkey. I, I have been seeing um, our Russian counterparts in Turkey a couple of times. I discussed that occasionally with the Turkish uh, government. So we, we value very much their contribution, the contributions they have been making in general in this conflict, above and beyond the nuclear. I think we have to um, exercise every possible means to, to stop this war. And I think um, any effort and those efforts are very appreciated by the international community, and including myself, of course. Yes. Sir. Hello, DG. Hello. Uh, uh, my question is two resolutions in the Board of Governors in six months means the U.S. and E3, also international community, are disappointed about the revival of the JCPOA, also about the Iranian cooperation with IAEA. Yes. But it seems you are personally optimist. Uh, could you tell how much is the limit of your optimism about the Iranian cooperation with the agency? 
Thank you. Well, I, I, I don't know if I would say I'm optimistic. I, I am determined to continue. I, I am not going to, to stop in my efforts. Uh, my, uh, my effort is aimed at making Iran cooperate with us, They're, uh, understanding that they have an obligation to, to do that. Of course, they are a sovereign nation, and I, I cannot force them to do this, but there is an objective international law obligation that they have to, to, to work with us. What we try to do when it comes to a certain area, which is very technical, where they um, need to provide some answers, is we, uh, we try to do it in a way that would facilitate their coming forward with this information. Um, I don't want to get into too much technical detail, but there are different ways in which a country can provide information. We try to facilitate that by, by putting questions in a way that will allow them to cooperate. So I think um, it is in their best interest, uh, honestly, to, to, to work with us. Uh, as I've said many, many times, the IEA has no political agendas here. We are abiding by our mission, and they have an obligation uh, to do this. This is the basis of uh, peaceful nuclear activities in the world. When you uh, conduct nuclear activities, and Iran has a very ambitious program, you have to go by the rules. And if there is something that was found that should have not been there, you have to explain. It's not a matter of a politicization of, uh, of this issue. As, as some sometimes uh, say, it is simply complying with the obligations. And this will be the only way for Iran to regain the confidence that they aspire uh, to get. Without that, the confidence is not going to materialize out of, uh, out of uh, thin air, unfortunately. So I hope they will cooperate. Thank yes. Uh, my question is uh, a little bit like his question. Uh, I, uh, has IAEA any uh, deadline for this situation? Uh, sometimes yes, sometimes no from Iran, from IAEA. And uh, how long will this situation continue? Uh, I mean, uh, do you have any deadline? Uh, no, you know, you know I, I don't like deadlines. Deadlines have a connotation, uh, a repressive connotation that uh, I don't like. I, I, I think we have to work uh, with respect, with mutual respect. Uh, of course, taking the agency very seriously. You cannot continue for months on end and for years without uh, giving uh, explanations. When explanations are due, when you have an obligation uh, to give them. So uh, I wouldn't talk about deadlines, but at the same time, uh, we cannot continue with this forever. Uh, it is obvious that uh, for the international community uh, as such, if you add absence of cooperation with a nuclear program that is growing and growing and growing, then the lack of confidence is, is, is absolute and, and this situation is, is not going to um, uh, result in any positive atmosphere or any positive thing for Iran. I hope they, they can come to that conclusion as well. Thank you. Uh, sorry, Francois. Francois Murphy from Reuters. Um, just a couple of questions, and one on Iran, one on, on Ukraine. Um, yeah. Let's assume for a moment that this meeting later this month does happen with Iran. Um, your NPT report uh, has a kind of interesting wording on what you need to see from Iran at that meeting. So I was just wondering if you could put it in perhaps slightly plainer English. I mean, the report says you basically need to need Iran to sort of start providing answers in, in this meeting, which suggests they need to show you like a tiny little bit of something that would be the beginning of a process. So I'm wondering what, how, you know, how would you describe what you need to see from Iran? And then on Ukraine, uh, it was about three weeks ago that you were on the doorstep of the UN Security Council, and you suggested that an agreement could be reached within days. You, I mean, you often put it in terms of what you hope rather than what you expect, but you, know, you said it, it could be, you hope there would be a deal within, within days. And here we are, three weeks later, still no deal in sight on the, um, on the protection zone. I'm just wondering if you can give us some sense of how these talks have evolved, because for us, it's essentially a black box. And we, you know, yeah. As long as we have no I deal, understand. we have no sense of how it's going, and you I tell understand. us we're not there yet. So are we closer than we were? Are we further away than we were? How is it going? I understand. Uh, so um, the, uh, the first part, 
on the on the wording and what we expect. Um, I think you 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 are you are right. The wording reflects uh, what what it reflects, and you understood it perfectly well, because what we have been uh, getting is I mean it's like we are talking past each other. We are asking questions and we are not getting answers, or the answers we are getting are answers as I I think quite. Um, in a very direct way, I characterize them as technically not credible. So we, we are talking with experts, among experts, and we are saying, well, what you are giving me is not, it's not possible. So please, uh, let's try again. <laughs> and so the, the, the idea for me has, has always been, because I'm trying to be optimistic, as the gentleman was saying here, um, and, and the, 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 the verb start, um, I think, has this meaning. If we uh, start to see that uh, some of the technical answers point to the problem we are uh, signaling, well, then it's something that I would be, I would be happy to, to reflect. One of the things that I um, often hear is that uh, from some Iranian uh, counterparts is that we are not reflecting um, uh, something positive. Well, I say, well, start you know, delivering something. For me, engagement is not simply that you sit down or that you, we try that already. We tried having calendars, you know, having uh, periodical meetings, quarterly meetings, monthly meetings, bi-monthly meetings, here, there, everywhere. It's not working. So we, we can sit here and in the space of one minute, I will realize whether this is meaningful and we are getting into, into an area that is related to the origin of the particles uh, in these places and the information we are showing them. And this hasn't happened. I hope it will. I, ho I really hope it, it, it will uh, soon. Regarding Saporizia, in fact, uh, you know, maybe it's a black box, but it's a small box because, you know, uh, what we are saying, what we are proposing is very simple. Don't shoot at the plant. Don't shoot from the plant. And, and the, 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 uh, the points of uh, still, of doubt, are not, not that many. So I'm saying that it's small is in the sense that you are not going to, if, if we can have the, the zone, which I really hope will be, the case, you will not discover all of a sudden a uh, 24 pages uh, uh, agreement with annexes. It's, it's, it's a very simple thing, which will allow for, will, will reflect the political commitment, very serious political commitment of both sides uh, to, to stop do, doing something which is still taking place. And I'm not attributing anything, it's still taking place. So um, uh, we are having yet another uh, series of consultations this week and the next week um, it's going to continue so um, I'm sorry if I cannot go much further but there will be much more than getting to yes uh, really that is uh, that is uh, that is necessary and this is why uh, we are discussing I was discussing yesterday as uh, um, you were referring to with with Foreign Minister uh, Baerbock in Berlin about that. There are countries that are very involved in this conflict and they have a stake uh, in peace. They want to know more. They want to see how they can support uh, us. And I, I, I need that because, of course, this is a conflict where there are, there are alliances, uh, there are um, alignments as well, and they, they, these, these count as I have come to learn. Very good. I thank you for your interest and your questions, and we will be seeing each other uh, very soon, I hope. Thank you very much.